In this video I'd like to take you through the configuration wizard which is a new component of the remote support platform version 2.4. I'm going to go in and log into the remote support platform and I'm going to use my administration username and password. I'll choose to log on and once the system has logged me on you're going to see in the very first screen how the initialization wizard automatically comes up now. The initialization wizard is going to automatically take you through the configuration process of the remote support platform and you'll see there is an option here that allows me to specify whether or not I want the wizard to automatically open in the remote support platform if I haven't fully configured uh, the platform. The next step is it gives me the ability to choose a configuration template. This is a template that has been created uh, previously that simplifies the entire process of setup and I will show you at the end of this session how to do that. Next step is if you're using a proxy server you may want to or you not you may want to but you definitely will want to go in and specify your proxy server connections with everything in the initialization wizard there is an option to test each phase and that's what we've done so we click on test connection and it's been able to connect through to the proxy uh, and then connect to the internet the next step is for us to put in the specific details of the customer now you can either point to a license file and the initialization wizard will retrieve the system and installation numbers from the license file or you can go ahead and do what I'm doing right now which is manually typing in that system number and the installation number now you know uh, already that you can retrieve that from uh, inside SAP Business One or from the license manager simply by uh, by opening up the license manager and you'll find that information in there. The next step is to put in my S user number and my password which enables me to connect in and identify myself when I'm connecting through to the SAP support channel. Now each of the different ways that we connect in to either SAP or to uh, a partner database or a partner system these are all called channels uh, so again this is to connect through to the SAP channel once again I'm going to simply click on test connection and it's going to validate that I've put in the right S number and password we've successfully connected so I'll say OK the next step once I've done that simply click on next and I'll have the option to configure the next channel which is the partner channel not only does the initialization wizard and the remote support platform allow you to communicate with SAP but it also allows you as a partner or if you're an SAP Business One user watching this it allows uh, you to communicate uh, and exchange tasks, receive tasks directly from your partner. Once you configure the partner channel, you tick on the partner channel option, you specify the WebDAV URL that relates to your particular partner, you specify the username and password that is required for that, and same process again, you'll simply click on test connection and it will make sure that it can connect through to the partner's WebDAV server. Now, in this particular instance, we're using a WebDAV server that is already pre-installed on our local machine. I'll choose Next. The next step is to enable the automatic email notification function. In order to do that, first thing we need to do is enable the email channel and then start configuring the necessary components to communicate via the simple mail transfer protocol or SMTP. You'll need to potentially speak to your uh, email administrator or your IT administrator, get the name of your SMTP server, specify whether or not you want uh, the, the SMTP to be secured 
or open SMTP again that is going to require you to gather that information from your administrator then you'll specify your username and your password that uh, will enable you to authenticate against your uh, SMTP server so pop that in test your connection and that has gone and successfully connected the next step is to put in the email address that these messages are going to go from so we'll pop that in so this is the email address that it's going to come from and then of course in the next box the email recipients you can specify the people who will receive these email messages these email notifications we'll say next the very next step that you get is a list of all of the different databases that are available for the remote platform to monitor. Now you can do a select all or you can deselect all by uh, simply clicking on this particular checkbox. The other thing that you can do is that you can go through and specifically select the databases that you want to monitor and deselect the databases that you don't want to monitor. So I'm just going to go and do that now. I'm going to select and deselect a couple. You also need to make sure, of course, that at least one of your databases is flagged as productive. And you're able to go against each one of those databases you've selected as active. Specify whether or not it's a demo database, it's a productive database, or it's for testing. So I'm going to flag a couple of these as productive. The next step is, of course, click on next. So we're now up to step nine in the process. And again, remember at any point in time, if you hold the process, you can come back in and start from where you left off. So what do I wanna do now from an approval and privacy perspective for messages coming and going from the SAP channel? Well, if it's a new task, I can specify uh, whether or not I wanna request manual approval automatically approve or automatically reject and I can specify that for new tasks updating tasks or sending back task results the other thing I can choose here is I can allow remote management and that then allows me to exchange those messages across with SAP once I click on next I can go through the same process with the approval and privacy settings for the partner channel. I can specify again whether or not I want these tasks, these task updates and task results to be manually approved, automatically approved or rejected. I'll go and say next. The next step, of course, as you know, the remote support platform allows you to automatically download software updates for your SAP Business One installation. I can specify that I do want to do this so I click on the download authorization and here I need to put in my S number and password for a user that has access to this function. So I'll put in my S number and my password. The next thing I'll do is click on the test connection as usual, make sure that's working fine. I can also specify then whether or not I want to enable the automatic patch installation for the remote support platform. And the second option is to enable the automatic patch download for SAP Business One. Now we always, in this case, we require that you do um, a manual installation of the patches for SAP Business One. Obviously, this is a very critical step uh, and we don't want to apply those patches without uh, you having total control over that process. But you may want to, of course, have those automatically downloaded for you and then you make that decision. What you can do right now is you can choose to save these settings that you've just configured into a configuration template. Um, and that then allows you to take this configuration template and then import that into uh, 
a new remote support platform uh, database and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second so let's go and create our configuration file save it to a location on on a, a hard disk somewhere either your local hard disk or on a network location somewhere that you have access to give it a name that you can obviously remember in this case I'm going to call it my configuration template and I'll hit save now this is being saved as an XML file I'm also able to specify whether or not I want to collect and send my system status reports to SAP and if I want to uh, retrieve tasks from SAP after finishing the wizard so once again we give you total control over exactly how much or how little information you choose to share and retrieve from SAP uh, and of course uh, from your partner if you're an SAP Business One customer watching this video. So that's that process. What I'm now going to do is show you once you've created that configuration file how you can import that configuration file in to the remote support platform. Same process I'm now going to go back in and I'm going to start up the remote support platform put in my username and password and log on and the very next step same as the last demonstration I gave you is it will open up the remote support platform it will detect that the configuration has not been completed I have again that tick box option to launch this wizard and that's ticked which is why the wizard is opening up again remember you can untick that if you don't want this to happen I'll choose next and now I can choose my configuration template let's browse out to the location where we just saved our configuration template before and there it is I'll just select it and choose open that now reads the content of my XML file and it gives me the ability to now validate or if you like revalidate the options or the choices that were made when that configuration template was originally created so for example you might send this out to a, another customer and some of these settings need to be changed so again I can do that the proxy server the license and the SAP authentication information I can change and it's simply a matter of utilizing the wizard again and going step by step through choosing next changing each of the uh, configuration parameters that are relevant same scenario here I can go and choose which of the databases are valid now you'll see that it does pre-select the same databases that were there before I can change that I can now go in and again change the approval and privacy settings so exactly the same process that we went through before just simplified made a little faster uh, by creating that configuration template specify your software updates your download authorization and again uh, your parameters that you want to specify if you want the automatic patch downloads for your business one system and the automatic patch installation for the remote support platform obviously in this particular instance we may not want to save our settings to a configuration template again we just want to apply them so I choose finish and we're now done and complete that is the initialization wizard um, going from start to finish and also creating and utilizing that configuration template hopefully you've now seen how quick simple and easy it is to configure the remote support platform and of course we encourage everybody to take advantage of this functionality because it really does help to decrease your total cost of ownership by making it incredibly easy for you to manage uh, and maintain your SAP Business One system